today is an exciting video because I want to talk to you guys about how you can improve your bike videos. Uh, I'm going to talk specifically about bike videos, uh, less about other sports just because that's what I'm most familiar with. And the video I'm going to use today as an example is the most recent video and the one I'm probably the most proud of to date is the open casket video that I did with Nick Clark. Uh, so before we get into the tips, I just want to say uh, you can always subscribe below. Uh, can always unsubscribe whenever you want to, but if you guys like the videos, I'd really, really appreciate it. And yeah, so let's get into it. My first tip is creating a story. So the reason I say that is because a story just makes your video more compelling. Uh, if it has kind of something to draw people into or something to relate to, it just makes it for a more interesting video for the viewer to watch. It's not just a bunch of clips kind of mashed together. Don't get me wrong, those videos definitely have their place and I also very much enjoy watching them. But I think just having a story for your video just kind of brings it up from like a seven to a nine or a 10. It just kind of gives it that little cherry on top that'll make it just that much better. Uh, so, like I said at the beginning, uh, I'm going to use Open Casket as an example. So, as we were filming this video, we started about a year ago, and we were about three clips into the video, and Nick already knew that he kind of had a small tear in his patellar tendon. So his patellar tendon uh, actually ended up giving out on a backflip tabletop that he did over a box jump. He put his, let, he put his foot down and kind of wiped out, and the tendon just gave out. So we almost scratched the whole video right there just because, you know, Nick went through a lot. It was a whole year of kind of frustration and getting back into it. But then Nick kind of found that fire inside of him to really create more of a banger video. He wanted to actually come back and do even bigger tricks than we filmed before, just as kind of a redemption story. Um, redemption stories are always great. Uh, it shows that a rider can really overcome anything. Uh, this was just one great example. I know companies like Red Bull, they're really kind of creating their videos based around stories now, whether it's traveling to another country and kind of riding through that city or whatever it is. Uh, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I, I think that it's bringing more creativity to videos. It's not just kind of going out with your friends, grabbing a few clips and mashing them together. Uh, I, I, think it, I think it really brings more to the video. So my second tip is going to be asking the rider or athlete for a trick list. So it all depends on who you're shooting with. Um, for example, with Nick, we had an entire list written out of what tricks he wanted to get. Uh, obviously, you're not always gonna get every trick that's on that list, but I really see a benefit in having a good solid plan from the rider and it gives you as a filmmaker more of an idea of what they want to shoot so that you can have an idea on how you're going to shoot it uh, and then you can almost start planning out how those clips are kind of going to go together throughout the timeline of of your video uh, every rider i ask for it um, drew bazanson's video from all in skate park uh, he's one of those riders that doesn't like giving a trick list and i totally understand that because with the stuff he does it's absolutely insane and sometimes pro riders don't want to say what tricks they're going to do because then people are going to kind of stand around and they're going to pressure them into doing those tricks instead of it being more relaxed so you kind of just got to gauge who you're filming with you can always ask and if they don't want to then that's cool you kind of just work around it but if they do want to give you a trick list then that'll just make your both of your jobs so much easier in the end. So that brings me into my third point perfectly. So my third tip is planning out your shots. So you won't always be able to plan out every single shot in a video that you're gonna wanna shoot, but having a solid idea beforehand is so key to making a video successful. Um, a lot of high production videos, and even if you wanna compare it to Hollywood movies, there's always a storyboard, there's always a plan, they never just go in and start running and gunning and shooting whatever they want. Uh, now with bike videos it's a little bit more relaxed and it's kind of tougher to make a plan because sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. But I think just kind of having written out or even just speaking with the athlete and figuring out what types of shots you want to get and how the intro is going to be, the outro, even even 
deciding on the music beforehand is great because then you can kind of have that in your head while you're shooting you kind of shoot with that intensity or relaxed calm uh, beat uh, but yeah it's it's as simple as that just create a plan and the video should come together so much better because you'll kind of have a vision on what you want to do tip number four this is a small but very important tip actually uh, over the years I've found that shooting the tricks first and then shoot the run-in shots so a lot of people will shoot a bunch of run-in shots for whatever line or trick that the rider is going to do and I'll put an example here but you like you always want to kind of show a story of how they got to the trick if they kind of did a line into it uh, but it's so much easier on you and the rider to get the trick first then shoot the run-in shot because let's say you spend two hours filming this trick and they don't even land it and the rider wants to give up on it and move on then you've already wasted time shooting run-in shots that you're not even going to end up using so save yourself time and effort and just save them for after because those are the easy shots to get anyway so when you're all done with all of the tricks just get the run-in shots it's not important to shoot them in the same line if you know that they did that line uh, obviously try not to cheat it but you know there's there's just like little hacks and stuff that filmers do to just make everyone's life easier so there's nothing wrong with that tip number five i can't stress this one enough i've been a victim of this one i've done it to myself so many times uh, there was actually a vlog that i shot where i did this and i was so angry at myself for doing it do not stop recording as soon as the rider lands try to capture footage after them celebrating because you never know what's going to happen for example, I shot a vlog with uh, Jaden Chipman and Joel Bondu. It's in the vlog where Jaden does a flare 540 uh, or 540 flare, whatever you want to call it. And as he's riding away, I stopped recording right as his front tire just blew up. I was so upset with myself because I would have been such a good clip to have as that was the ender for the video. But I stopped it right on that point. So yeah, just keep recording. That's, that's pretty much it. It's simple. Keep recording until everything's done. Well, those are my five tips on how to improve your bike videos. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope these tips help you guys out at least a little bit. Um, I'm trying to make these mistakes myself and sharing them with you guys so that I can help you guys out in the future. And I'm always learning myself. So if you guys have any tips that you have for me, uh, definitely leave a comment below. I, I'm always open to any sort of suggestions or opinions on anything that I do. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, definitely subscribe. Uh, you can always unsubscribe if you want to. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And again, leave comments below of anything that you want to ask me or share with me or any tips you have. And yeah, so I'll talk to you guys later.